Ahoy mates, Julie here, and welcome to Monday's episode of The Voters TV. First up, stamp collectors will rejoice over today's nautical news. The U.S. Postal Service and Congressman John McHugh held dedication ceremonies on August 4th to mark the release of first-class stamps bearing images of classic wooden powerboats. The celebrations for the vintage mahogany speedboat stamps, sure to be a prize among philatelists or stamp collectors, were held at the Antique Boat Museum in Clayton, New York. One highlight in the speedboat stamp series is a 1915 custom-built Hutchinson Brothers launch from Alexandria Bay called Frolic. A popular style for touring and commuting, the long deck launch was capable of reaching 30 miles per hour. In addition to Frolic, each stamp sheet depicts Dispatch, a 1931 Garwood triple cockpit runabout, Thunderbird, a 1939 Hackercraft commuter boat, and Duckers, a 1954 Chris Craft racing runabout. The selvage, or decorative area around the pane of 12 stamps, features a recent photograph of Miss Columbia. This marks the second time this summer that the U.S. Postal Service released maritime-themed stamps after the June 21st release of the Pacific Lighthouse series, showcasing original acrylic paintings by Howard Coslow. To give your snail mail that nautical touch, you can purchase either set of stamps, or both, at a U.S. Postal Office near you. And if you're outside the U.S. and just dig the images, visit USPS.com where you can download high-res images of the stamps. Next up, let's get wet and wild. Many of our viewers participated in the recent second annual Aquapalooza event put on by Sea Ray and the Sea Ray Owners Club, with on-the-water celebrations that took place around North America during the weekends of both July 21st and July 27th. As promised, we wanted to feature some videos of the festivities. Initial estimates suggest nearly 20,000 people and over 1,000 boats attended the various celebrations. The signature event took place on the Potomac, just outside of D.C., and included an appearance by country music star Taylor Swift. On Aquapalooza's YouTube channel, they are also featuring videos sent in by participants from around the country. Tom Britt and Steve King of GeistRadio.com shot their first video podcast at Aquapalooza on Geist Reservoir's Cocktail Cove near Indianapolis, Indiana. I was thrilled to see this one because that's the body of water I grew up boating on and was where I learned to water ski. Yay for Geist! Here's another video from Gull Island on Lake St. Clair. Looks like the three-legged race was a big hit and SpongeBob even made an appearance. There was also a very serious sandcastle competition. Even the grown-ups got into it. And while Aquapalooza may be behind us now, the summer is not. So perhaps these images of all this fun and frolicking will inspire you to participate in more on-the-water festivities during these dog days of August. Remember, most manufacturers, dealers, and all kinds of boating enthusiast organizations have events where you can meet and share with other boaters. You can also connect with other boaters, especially local ones, on theboaters.com, our new social network, to organize your own festivities. Remember, you can sign up as a private beta tester, and therefore charter member, on www.theboaters.com right now. Who knows, maybe you'll start an annual local tradition to close out summer. It would be easy to celebrate with one of the new boats in today's Power Play segment. The new Cobalt 46 yacht debuted as the first production boat equipped with the new Zeus propulsion system, which we introduced to you back in Episode 7 of The Boaters TV. The Cobalt 46 Euro-styled express cruiser, designed for offshore cruising, reaches 38 miles per hour according to the company. The 46 marks the first foray into the yacht world by Cobalt, which was already well known for high quality sport boats. Cobalt's largest boat prior to the 46 was its 343, coming in at just over 35 feet long. Cobalt Yachts President Konstantinos K. Konstantou, aka Koss, explains that the 46 was designed from the start for extended offshore use. The yacht performed very well in tests off the coast of South Carolina coast, facing seas of up to 8 feet. The yacht features two staterooms that each sleep two, as well as a dinette sofa that seats six and converts to a berth for two. There are two heads with full showers. So what separates the Cobalt from other 46-foot sport yachts? Mega yacht-like features, says Constantinou, such as the vessel's custom cabinetry and granite counters, and wide companionway leading from the salon to the helm deck. All features of a comfortable life at sea. I'm not too hip on the color, though. What is that, mustard brown? The windows are a little weird for me, but a cool-looking yacht nonetheless. 
and I'll be interested to see how the Zeus propulsion system performs. That's all for today's episode of The Boaters TV. Thanks for watching and we'll see you back here on Wednesday. Until then, safe and happy boating to you all. Take care. This episode of The Boaters TV was brought to you by the letter X. That's X for X-ray and signifying stop carrying out your intentions and watch for my signals.